This week, a strange signal from deep space has scientists stumped. Astronomer Seth Shostak will lend us his expertise. A guy barely out of college is helping hundreds others get accepted to the Ivy Leagues. And Google employees take to social media to reform their workplace. Our reporters, Troy Wolverton from Business Insider and Barrett's John Swartz. This week on Press Heat. Good morning, everyone. I'm Scott McGrew. Scientists are talking about an unusual signal from deep space, a repeater, they call it, a repeating set of radio bursts blasted out six times, all coming from the same spot in space. Now, if your mind immediately went to that scene in the Jodie Foster movie Contact, you're not alone. Honestly, the real-life signals are less dramatic than this, lasting just milliseconds. But the movie does illustrate a real-life effort to detect signals from outer space called SETI, or the Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, a serious and sober effort by scientists to see if there's anyone out there. Dr. Seth Shostak is senior astronomer at SETI, and let me assure the viewer, this is real science, not tin foil hat stuff. When he's not looking for extraterrestrial signals, Seth spends his time debunking things like UFOs. Joined by John Swartz of Barons and Troy Wolverton of Business Insider. Thanks for being with us this morning. I want to talk about this exciting repeater signal in a minute, but let me kind of fantasize what is it like or what would it be like? This has to have gone through your head when you actually do get the signal that really undisputably is. From well, Scott, we, we had a kind of dry run. We had a test back in 1997. That's a long time ago now. But we got a signal. The boss called me up at home. He said, come on down. You know, we thought it might be the real deal. I kept waiting for the red telephone to ring. You know, we don't <laughs> yeah. have... We, I was going to say, tell me there's a red telephone. There's no red telephone. <laughs> I, I kept waiting for the men in black to show up. They did. Right, yes. <laughs> kept waiting for my mom okay, to call. But, so let's say you, you have you've done, you've checked the math and everything seems right. Do you call the president or I mean what's the procedure for we've made contact with with a foreign or an extraterrestrial yeah in the movies everything gets very dramatic and they yeah. start screaming in reality you want to check out the signal because you don't want it to turn out to be a San Jose State undergraduate prank or right. something like that right <laughs> so so you have to check it out and it would take days to check it out so that's actually what you're doing but if you checked it out and it turned out well this is really E.T. on the line, of course, you, know, you would just, you know, you don't have to call the press, they're already calling you. How often do you get encouraging or maybe uh, signs or signals, what do you call them, techno signatures? You could what, call them that, whatever it's too, you much, like. too much Greek, but Okay, yes. okay, good, that's refreshing. Um, <laughs> but it's, how often do you get something that's promising and, and how do you tell what the perfect signal is? Well, we've gotten better at that. It's sort of like airline safety, you know, there aren't too many incidents anymore. but. What you do is you, you know, we get signals every 10 seconds, John. We get a lot of signals, right? Mm -hmm. And the computers are good at filtering out the good ones from the bad ones. I mean, is this really ET or is it at and I mean, right? Is it a, kind of a terrestrial interference signal? So the facts are you don't get something that gets your attention really from year to year. You might not. It's not often. So how do you know if we're getting a signal from ET? I'm sure you guys have thought about this, like how that's distinguished from other signals that are out in space. And, and what was so remarkable about the recent signals that we got? Yeah, well, this new discovery of fast radio bursts, that's interesting because nobody knows what fast radio bursts are. You know, astronomers are pretty unimaginative when it comes to naming things. So fast radio burst is fast, it's radio, and it's a burst. Okay, so it sounds like a slide whistle, very quick one like that, but in a tenth of a second, a hundredth of a second, something like that, okay. Something like 60 of them had been seen across the sky in the last 10 years. What's doing it? The only thing we really know is that it's coming from very, very far away. When I say far away, billions of light years. I don't know what you have on your car, but billions of light years is a long, long way, right? Sure. Okay, so it's coming from that far away and you can still pick it up with an antenna here on Earth. It must be incredibly powerful. So, you know, people think of colliding black holes and so forth. But this one that was just discovered, it repeats. That's what Scott mentioned. And if it repeats, it can't be colliding black holes. You know, they collide. Well, they can't go back to their neutral corners and, and collide again. Well, what, so we don't know what it what is. What do you think they're trying to convey? Or what are they trying to well, assuming say? Well, right? yeah. or I'm whatever sure. it is. Well, let, let, let's back up. We're presuming 
it's not a they, right? I mean, that's the, I don't think that's it's the a default. They. There are people who say it is, but... Fair I'm enough. It, we, there are people who say it is, said the lead astronomer <laughs> at the search for extraterrestrial No, 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 I mean, they're, they're, they're yeah, serious but, people, but... Yeah, you know, no, I get that, but back to your point. But, yeah, what, is, what do you think the message is? Is there... Well, there's probably not a message. Look, okay. you have to, if you look at the history of, of astronomy, anyhow, not, not many people do, but if you were to do that, you'd find, okay, they're always puzzling things in the sky. That's the job description for being an astronomer. They, they don't pay you to go out and, hey, you know, the moon's still out there, right? I mean, you know, nobody's interested in that. Well, this weekend, maybe. But, you know, if you find something new, there will always be some group of people who say, you know what? We don't know what that is. It could be aliens on the line. And, of course, maybe it could be. But every time, whether it's quasars, pulsars, you know, the, the, the Pentagon on the North Pole of Saturn, I mean, people say, the aliens get to blame for everything. They're, they are the fall guys for everything we don't understand. What would be a good signal? I, it's been years since I watched the Contact movie. Maybe I should have rewatched it before this segment. But uh, I believe they were sending prime numbers or something, where it would be impossible. There's no way a quasar is sending out <clears throat> prime numbers. No. What's a good signal? Design a good signal. Yeah, I think prime numbers, you know, or the value of pi. Look, you probably learned the value of pi in the seventh Three grade. Four, and if, yeah, yeah, you finally hear from the aliens and they tell you something you learned in seventh grade. All yeah. right, not very interesting. But it would, it would be a sign. I mean, that is not random. Listen, yeah. if, they, if they sent me their encyclopedias, that would be a sign. Yes, and but it would be a pi lot more would be recognizable. Yeah, yeah, but you would be able to recognize the encyclopedia because it wouldn't be random. You know, you get pictures, you get sound, whatever. If they sent us their internet. Yeah. Okay, but. To answer your question, we don't look for anything very complicated like that. It's too hard. What we do is we look for a signal that's at one spot on the radio dial, like this TV program. It's at one spot on the radio spectrum. And it's, you know, slowly moving across the sky at the same speed that the stars move across the sky because of the rotation of the Earth. That means it's not a satellite. It's not this television station. It's ET trying to get in touch. So are you looking at particular areas of the sky right now? We try to do that. I mean, you, you, nobody knows where the aliens are hanging out. I mean, we're fairly confident they must be up there. There must be somebody. But where they are, you know, what kind of star systems are, is their planet in, that kind of thing. You have to sort of second guess them on the basis of what you know about astronomy. Do you get, do you get much support from Silicon Valley? I'm, I'm wondering just in terms of development of technology that would help you in your efforts. Uh, yeah, we benefit uh, from it, of course, because okay. a lot of this is computer technology. Uh, unfortunately, there's no, there's no funding for this to speak of. The right. total number of people- Congress used to fund you. It, that was before 1993, yeah. yeah. So it's all private donations, and there's very little money, and that really constrains the search. Sure. I bet everybody a cup of Starbucks will find ET by 2035 or something like that. But, of course, it won't happen if we can't do the experiment. So it is a funding To be issue. fair, the late Paul Allen gave you a tremendous amount of money. He did, to, yeah. get, to, to build an instrument up in the Cascades here, you know, beyond Redding, California. Sure. Yeah. So, so 20 years ago, I had the SETI program running on my computer. Are you still doing That's that right. kind of crowdsourcing of, of processing? I thank you, Troy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, in fact, that was not our project. That's a project of the University of California at Berkeley. So. Okay. But it is still running. It is. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, we've joked several times about uh, aliens and whatnot, and, and and even off the top, I said, you know, understand that the Dr. Shostak is a serious scientist looking for aliens. You spend uh, time debunking UFOs. There is an enormous difference between, between extraterrestrial intelligence somewhere in the universe, which mathematically has to be true, and UFOs kidnapping cows in Texas. Uh, cows? That's what I, mean, if I were All right. Yeah. Our, yeah. The, the, the water milk prices are going right, up. Yeah. All right. Well, the, well, yes, Scott, I absolutely agree with you. One third of the American public, polls have shown this for the last 40 years, one third of the public thinks that the aliens are here. You know, they're, they're in right. their saucers, hauling people out of their bedrooms, whatever. Right. Now, if that were true, that would be job security for me. So <laughs> I'd be all for it. If it were true. But I don't think it's true. I get phone calls every day, but I, I don't think it's true. But we do think that they're out there. There are a trillion planets in the Milky Way. If they're not out of there, if they're not out there, there's something really special going on here. Seth, let me give one, one last question, and, and that is the mathematical likelihood that we will detect an alien signal in your lifetime right. is small. So you will spend your life searching for something that may not, it, hopefully it's tomorrow, it may not happen. What, what motivates you to continue to look if you know that mathematically it's unlikely? Yeah, well, to begin with, I I've, I've, I've bet everybody that we will find something by... So I'm being very careful when I cross First Street, you know, not to uh, right. get hit by a truck. <laughs> but you, you're probably right. Maybe we won't find it. But it's just interesting to be involved in the search. 
Because, Scott, it's like solving puzzles. Every time you learn about new planets, and we're learning about them all the time now, stuff like that, that helps you. So it's, it's, it's something that gets better with time. It's not repetitious. It's not boring. It gets better. And what was the bet, 2025? 30, make it 35. 20, 35? All right, I'll, I can last that long. So right. I'll, I'll have you back on for the <laughs> Look, either we find a, Either we find aliens or you get a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Dr. Shostak, thank you for being with us this morning.